All right then, gang. So we've created our Firebase Cloud functions now to create notifications, and we have those inside the notifications collection in our Firestore. So now we need a way to grab this data and show it in our application over here. So that's inside the notifications component. So let's get rid of this index. That was our cloud functions. Now what we could do is connect this component to our Redux state and grab the data there, or we could go to the parent component, which is the dashboard, since we've already connected these and we have the map state to props, which we'll need, and just get the data in this component, then pass it down as a prop inside notifications. And that's what we're gonna do. So then, if you look down here, we're already connecting to one collection in Firestore because we want the project and we pass that down into the project list. But now what we're going to do is connect to another collection and that is the notifications collection. So since this is an array that goes into Firestore Connect, we can tack on another object here. So inside this object, we'll do a collection property and that this time is going to be notifications. So I'm also going to apply a limit property to this to three to only show a certain amount of notifications. So now we're connecting to this collection as well inside Firestore Connect. So behind the scenes, our Firebase reducer or Firestore reducer rather knows to sync this stuff from Firebase from our database to the Redux store as well. So now we're doing that. What we can do is get that off the Redux store and return it inside this object so we have it inside the props of the dashboard. So let's do that. After the auth prop, we'll do a comma and go on to the next line. Create a property called notifications and set that equal to state.firestore since this is where they're kept. Then we'll go into the ordered property to get them ordered. Then we'll get the notifications. So this now is an array of those notifications and we've attached it now to the props of this component. So now up here in the component, we can grab that using a bit of destructuring in here, notifications, and then we can pass them down as a prop inside the notifications component. So again, we'll say notifications is equal to notifications. Okay, so now we've done that, we can get them inside the notifications component. So again, let's do a bit of destructuring from the props to grab that. I'm gonna say down here, const, then in curly braces, notifications, and that's not with a capital N, is equal to props. So that grabs the notification object off the props and stores it inside this constant. That is an array. So now we need to cycle down here through that array and output an li tag for each individual notification. So then we could cycle through the data up here and then output it here. This time I'm gonna embed it directly in the template just to shape things up a little bit. So we'll do our curly braces and then we'll say notifications and we'll do a double ampersand sign and then notifications dot map. Now remember, when we do this in front of the map function, what we're doing is checking that the notifications actually exists. If this has a length of zero, there's nothing in it, then it's not gonna bother mapping through them. If a length does exist and notifications are inside that array, then we'll map through them. So that's what this does, all right? So now inside this map function, we want to take the notification that we're currently cycling through. Now, instead of always calling it notification because I hate typing it, I'm gonna call this item. So inside, we'll output the item details. So we're gonna return some JSX here, right? So let's do that, return. And then in brackets, I'm gonna do an li tag first of all. And that li tag is actually gonna have a key because it's a surrounding element and the key is gonna be the item dot ID. We have access to an ID property on it, which is gonna give us this thing, okay? So then we're outputting that first of all, then inside the li tag, I'm gonna do a span tag. This is gonna have a class of pink text and inside that we'll output the user. So we'll say item dot user. Remember, that's the user property over here. So we're gonna output the name. So who started this notification? Okay, then we'll do another span tag and inside that we'll output the content. So item dot content, oops not slash content, dot content, like so. Then finally under that, we need to output the date. So I'm gonna do a div. This is gonna have a class of gray hyphen text and also a class of note date. And this is just short for notification, just me being lazy. 
So inside there, we need to output the date. Now we're going to use moments to format this date. So let's import that first of all. Import moment from the moment library. Then down here in curly braces, we'll say moment. Then in brackets, we want the item. Then we want the time property, which is stored inside the document right here. Yeah. Then we want to say to date. And then we want to use a method on moment called from now. And this is going to format it in such a way that says something like two minutes ago or five minutes ago. OK, so now what we're doing is placing that inside this div at the bottom. And now we should be logging those notifications out to the browser. So let's save this and let's go to the React app. And we don't see any notifications there. But if we inspect the element over here and then go to the console, we should see an error. And that's something to do with the permissions. So missing or insufficient permissions. OK, so what's that? Well, we've not set up any kind of security rules for this collection notifications. So let's just go into rules and create that security rule for them. Because at the minute, all we're doing is matching these two things right here. So let's do this. Copy that and paste it down below. And this time it's going to be notifications. And then here is the single notification. And then we're allowed read access, but not write access. We don't want anyone to write them. We're allowed read access if someone is logged in. OK, so let's publish these now. You might have to wait a minute before you go back and try this out. So when we go back now and refresh, then we should see that this works. We're getting those notifications right here. OK, so that's pretty cool. We're now logging these over here in the notifications panel. And the good thing is whenever, say, another user somewhere else creates a project or creates a new account, we're going to get a notification in real time right here. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So I'm going to go to new project, but open this in a new tab over here. Now, let me just go to this little app to split up my screens like this so that we can see one on the left and one on the right. So we can see the notifications over here and I'm going to create a new project over here. So I'll call this Mario Car Bonanza and then come and have a go and then create this. And then in a second, we should see that create a notification here in this component. And we can see that right here. Cooper Trooper added a new project a few seconds ago. So that's pretty awesome, right? We're now adding all of these notifications out. I just want to sort this thing out right here because currently there's no space between Cooper Trooper and added a new project. So I'm going to go over to my text editor and just add that space in. So after user, we'll just add a space in, save that, view this in a browser and it should start to look better. OK, cool. So there we go. Now we've created our notifications. In the next video, what I'd like to do is show you how we can order data that comes back from Firebase. So we can show these in order and also these in order.